Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to all the visitors we have on church today. So as many of you know, I was there last Sunday because I was in Uganda. And it was a very special blessing for me to go back to Uganda after 25 years. I had lived in Kenya for one year back in 1988. I had traveled to Africa five times, traveled to different parts of Africa, doing different mission trips. But I hadn't been there for 25 years. So it was a very special blessing for me to go to Uganda, to go with my daughter Theodora, where I went to leave her there for two months. An amazing experience. And there's several things I just want to share with you from that experience I had that I think are lessons we can learn. So first of all, for me, whenever I travel, whether it's in Uganda, in Mexico, in Albania, or wherever it is, one of the things that just strikes me again and again is how we all are God's children. We all are a part of one family. It doesn't matter what color our skin is, doesn't matter what nationality we are, doesn't matter what religion we have, what we believe, it doesn't matter how poor or rich, we're all part of one family. It doesn't matter how different and strange certain things are. I was walking down downtown Kampala, the capital of Uganda, and it was packed, thousands of people all over the streets. And really, when I looked around, I was walking, me and my partner there, Peter, were the only white people that I could see. A couple of Indians, and a lot of everyone else, black. Things were a little different. I walked down the market, and they were selling bananas, exotic fruits, along with termites and grasshoppers. Now I can say, when I lived in Kenya, I tried the termites. I've never eaten the grasshoppers. And we can say, that's quite strange. And yet they look at it and say, this is delicious. They look at some of the things that we have. I remember when my one Kenyan friend, I took to have lobster. And he looked at lobster and said, disgusting. Who would ever eat lobster? So our traditions, our cultural tastes may be different. I went out for lunch and I had this staple food there, matoke, this corn, I mean this uh, banana meal, which they eat every day. So, there are differences, and yet, when you look beyond the superficial, superficial differences, you see, we are all children of God. Theodora is spending two months at a school, and the school children there are well, like school children anywhere in the world. When she went there, they would run up to her, they would tug her, they want to be held by her, they want to play, they want to be thrown around. Theodora was making uh, tie-dye t-shirts for them, giving them different arts and crafts. They were loving everything. We took them soccer balls, they were playing soccer ball, netball, volleyball, just like children in America. Not so much different. And the teachers there, and the administrator, this beautiful woman, Mabel, is the director of the school, and the teachers all want what's best for their children, for their students. Why is it? And this is a big question for us to ask today in America. Why are we highlighting the differences? The differences in nationality, in color, the differences in religious beliefs, Jewish, Muslim, Christian. Why is it that we are highlighting, and not only highlighting, but creating division and hatred? for those who are different than ourselves. Politicians may choose to do that, to try to win votes. But we, as followers of Jesus Christ, need to remember, we betray our faith when we choose to not see the other, the black Ugandan, the Muslim, the Jew, the Mexican, the caravan of people coming up from Central America, when we choose not to see them as children of God, a part of the same family, they have the same father that we do, the creator of the world. 
And we choose not to see them in that light. We are betraying our Christian faith. Let us be very clear about this. Because Jesus taught us very clearly to love one another, even those we consider our enemies, to love them, to treat them with kindness, goodness, love, and respect. So it's a struggle being in Uganda, how different people are, and yet how much we are the same. Let us remember. The second thing I was inspired by in Uganda, I went and the, the people who helped to organize this trip where Theodora is spending two months, Peter and Sharon Georges, who visited our parish a couple of years ago. They were OCMC missionaries. They're an American couple who have lived in Uganda now for 15 years. They're both 69 years old. They went at the age of 52 to live in Uganda as missionaries. And back in 2005, they started this Ugandan, St. Nicholas Ugandan Children's Fund. And what they do is they look for the poorest of the poor children, children who are orphans, and there are many orphans in, in Uganda, 2.5 million orphans in a country of 45 million people. So 5% of the country is working. Many of them from HIV, AIDS, their parents have died. So Peter and Sharon look for children, students, who have no support, who have no parents, maybe no support, can't go to school, and they sponsor them. They pay their school fees, buy their school uniform, give them whatever needs they, they, they need, and basically, parent them and help them go to school. They have 250 students who are in secondary, elementary school, secondary school, vocational college, and university. So in the school where Theodora is teaching right now, there's 250 students, and 60 of them are sponsored by Peter and Sharon Georges. But it's, it's beautiful. I met these kids. I, in fact, I, the Saturday that I was there, one of their students, was graduating university. He's a student whom they had sponsored from fourth grade, Moses. And they got to see him graduate from university. 75 people in their program have graduated from either university or vocational school. And they helped them then to find jobs, prepare them to get ready to find jobs. So they're changing the lives of 250 or more, 300 25 children, students, and their families. An amazing, inspiring work. And I recommend that you to look up, say, Nicholas Children's Fund on the end of Google, and you'll see the beautiful work they do. But I was inspired by their work, but also by Peter and Sharon themselves. I mean, imagine being 52 years old. Peter was working for, I forget, some communications company. And they were downsizing, and he was going to get, they were laying off of people, and he took an early retirement. And he said, okay, both he and his wife had been on short-term mission trips, he to Project Mexico, she to India, and they, they said, we want something more in life. So at 52 years old, they decide to retire and go to Uganda. First as OCX missionaries, then just doing this St. Nicholas program. They've been there for 15 years. They're 69, well, 69 years old right now. And they're as Ugandan as you get. Peter gets in the little matatus, the little uh, the, the vans, taxi vans, where they, they fit 25 people inside these vans. I got in a couple of times, and I'm a lot bigger than a lot of Ugandans, and I have to punch in there. Or oh, they get on the back of the motorcycles, these, these boda bodas, and they drive throughout the city. Wherever they have to go, they live simply. Imagine, they raise $250,000 a year to support their students, but they don't take any of the money to support themselves. They live off their retirement and give all to support these students. And why? Why would a couple do that? Because they realize the blessing of living a life in service, of giving to others. I mean, if you ask, oh, some people may say, oh, how can we live in Uganda? And how can we live like that? Yet, they would say they've been greatly blessed because their life is full of meaning and purpose, transforming the lives 
of other people, of all these children. It truly was an inspired experience. You need to have a talk to them and really get to know their lives and see their ministry firsthand. A third thing that I was thinking about during my trip there, I kept reflecting on Jesus' words in the Gospel of Luke. Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Now, how many of us think the poor are blessed? Many of us would say, wow, that's a tough life, a cursed life. And yet Jesus says, blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. And I was thinking, what does that mean? Being in Uganda, there was a lot of poverty you can see all over the place. It's very difficult and challenging living. And yet, there were people filled with hope in God. You would, you would find, we'd walk to school, 25 minutes to the school, and you'd see dozens of these taxis. And on the back of every taxi, you'll see, they write, the Lord is my shepherd, God is my reference and strength, Jesus is the way, all these things. Everywhere, they're praying all the time. They're turning to God. I mean, maybe it's because when you're poor and in need, what's your only hope is God. So at the school, they pray all the time. They, they just call up any of the kids and say, Matthew, get up here and say a prayer today. Nicholas, come up and say a prayer. So these kids get up and they say the most beautiful prayers. The last day I was at the school, all 250 kids came up. And one by one, they came in front of me and kneeled down, asking for a blessing from God. And then the teachers and the director of the school comes up to kneel down, asking for the blessing of God. I contrast that with us in America, who are comfortable, and prosperous, and what's one of the great dangers of our comfort and prosperity? We become too self-short, so the short we're still. And we think, oh, where is that God? We don't need God. There's no God. We can take care of We can take care of ourselves. I mean, in our society, as more and more people are falling away from God, they don't need it. Religion throughout the world is on the rise. But in Europe and America, you see people falling away from God. Why is it? Because we've given into the deception of our prosperity, our comfort, our material wealth. Blessed are the poor, Jesus says, for yours is the kingdom of God. The last thing I just want to highlight is there was a blessing for me to be in Uganda with my daughter Theodora. And Theodora went there with a, a dear friend of ours from Albania, another student, not, not a student, a young, a young adult who came and said the two of them are staying there for two months. And like Olivia is going in Peru, I paused to say, why are these young people taking a year of their time in between high school and college to go, not live in comfort, not to travel the world in luxury, but to go and live in places of challenge, places of danger, places of poverty, why is it? Now, sure, I'm not going to praise them too much because I'm sure they're going because they're adventurous. They like adventure. They like to travel. They know that they can learn a lot from people of other cultures. And so there's a reason. But they also discovered something. They discovered the meaning and how meaningful your life becomes when you learn to serve others, to give to try to help, to walk with those who are in need. They discovered that in Mexico. Just like anyone in this church who's gone to Met Project Mexico, you can attribute and say, yes, I realize there's a special blessing to go and serve. All of our volunteers who come once a month to our Living Bread Lunch, and you come to give hours of your time, and you realize there's a special blessing in giving. Jesus said, more blessed than it is to give than to receive. There's the secret of life. And when I look at Theodora and Olivia and our other young people who are discovering that, they're in the process of discovering it. But it's a great discovery that all of us can make. Like the Georges, you can't say, well, I should have done that when I was younger. 
that George has decided to do it when they were 52 years old and are still doing it at 69. Today, Archbishop Anastasios, my beloved mentor, turns 89 years old. And here's an 89 year old still serving others in Albania, giving up his life. So let us remember the blessing, discover that secret of life that you find in giving and serving and helping others. And don't think we only have to help those who are like us. Of course, we help our own family. But then those who are different, different color, different nationality, different religion, different whatever, they're still children of God, people of God, part of our large family. Let us always remember that. A new chapter.